High cholesterol is an evolving definition. Just like blood pressure, the guidelines change and a definition that's hotly debated, but what I would say a normal cholesterol is generally 200. Then we look at the LDL, the bad cholesterol. And for the high risk patients, we like it to be below 70. If you have a number of risk factors that put you at increased risk for heart disease, even at a normal cholesterol level, there's a lower threshold to initiate more aggressive lifestyle and even medication uh, implementation. Really our treatment depends on defining that risk and there's blood work and imaging to kind of delineate that risk, develop a treatment plan and have a variety of therapies that can now really individualize your personal treatment. Diet and exercise are probably some of the more forgotten tools that we have that actually across a lifespan make a tremendous difference. When it comes to diet, there's a couple of different diets that work, the Mediterranean diet, a vegan or plant-based diet, and something called a DASH diet. Some of the common components of these diets include you know, vegetables, legumes, high fiber, oat bran, other things include avocado. If you're good to eat meat, you want it to be lean meat. If you're going to eat chicken, you want to try to take the skin off of it. The second thing is medications. Now there's, a set, there's several different types of medications. Probably the most well-studied medication literally of all time is a group of medications called the statin medications. And these have been shown to lower the bad cholesterol, what we quote unquote called LDL cholesterol, as well as increase longevity and, and reduce the uh, risk of having heart disease events. So another way that we can lower cholesterol is through injectable medications. One of the prime examples is actually a group of medications called the PCSK9 inhibitors. Just to simplify, this is an antibody you take every two weeks that essentially increases the uptake of, of bad cholesterol from the bloodstream. These are just consumer-friendly pens. It's not like a shot, um, but, but they're very targeted therapies. And so the side effect profiles are minimal and they've shown to have not just lowering cholesterol to really low levels, but also been shown to reduce heart disease and strokes. There's some patients, and we're identifying more and more of them, have quite severely elevated levels of cholesterol that are entirely genetically inherited. Although normal cholesterol levels can be 200 when we talk about severely elevated cholesterol levels, we're talking about patients who have levels that are four or five, even 600 plus and that puts them at risk for having heart attacks, strokes in their 30s. And for these patients, there are some new medications, but they don't achieve the effect that we need. And fortunately, blood filtering or LDL apheresis, as we call it, where you can actually exchange, uh, you run your, your blood through a filter, takes out the bad cholesterol and circulates back in the blood without the bad cholesterol. If treated, they can live a very long life without these types of events. We've gotten our first exposure to therapies that demonstrate that identifying genes responsible for cholesterol and then targeting them can really produce profound drops in cholesterol. One of the genetic markers that we've identified is something called lipoprotein A. And this is something that every patient should be aware of, every physician should be aware of. So if you haven't checked your lipoprotein A, you should. Currently, the most effective therapeutic interventions lowering it 70 to 90% are in clinical trials. At North Shore, we actually are the second highest enrolling site in the nation in being able to get patients on these types of medications. And we're identifying more and more genetic targets. And I think that in the next decade, that we're going to see a lot more medications that are really targeted towards this precision, customized, personalized, individualized approach.